It's a pleasure to see you in the chair, and I'm, I'm not quite sure that um, the time limits are going to work for what I have here, but um, I'll do the best that I can. I first want to, to thank the Honourable Member for Basingstoke for her speech and for the work that our select committee has done, um, for their excellent report and to those who gave evidence to it. And I share the disappointment of everybody who's spoken um, that the government have not taken on the recommendations and I would like to hope that now we have a new government um, that they may wish to revisit this and take another look at the recommendations because they are good. Um, I would also like to add to um, those who have talked about quotas and I, I share their concerns I suppose that quotas are not perfect and quotas are not what we would want to have in an ideal world but we do not have Mr Sharma an ideal world yeah, yeah. we do not have the situation where women are equal to men in society or in this building so we have to be a, there has to be a disruptor to that, program, to that process a disruptor that makes, starts to make the rules work a little bit more in women's favour because if we leave it to how it is just now it will be a very very long time Mr Sharma before we actually see any change yeah. and action on this is, is long overdue and it was right, I think, for the, the member for Basingstoke to talk about cultural factors and to talk about this building and the way in which it works and some of the behaviour that happens in this building. And this is not new, Mr Sharma. My uh, honourable friend from Livingston referred to Winnie Ewing, and I also um, was to, going to refer to, to Winnie Ewing in this, because this is one of the, the first political biographies that I read was Winnie Ewing's biography. And she reports in her time in this place as a, a single female SNP representative in this place. Um, that she was, um, and she says in her book, I was interrupted whenever I spoke, I was regularly insulted, and even, I was even defamed once or twice. I was even stalked by a Labour MP. And she describes that in, in some detail, though she doesn't name him. And this c behaviour continued um, when she moved to be a representative in the European Parliament as well. And it took the chair of the European Parliament to write to the Speaker here to tell off those members who had continued to harass and upset her in the European Parliament when she was there as a representative, which is completely unacceptable. And we know as well that this behaviour has not changed um, in more recent years either. My um, honourable colleague, um, former honourable colleague Dr Ailey Whiteford in 2011 was threatened by uh, the then select committee chair with a doing, um, which is absolutely inappropriate. And she, had to, she felt she had to withdraw from that select committee because of that. And as we have seen from the recent harassment news, this is still a problem. This is still an issue. Um, and we cannot be blind to these issues at all. We need to act upon them. Now, my experience, and others have talked about their own experience as well, is that I have been well supported by, by men and women um, in the SNP and, and not in the SNP. And like the Honourable Member from Hampstead and Kilburn, I started as a local councillor in Glasgow, City Council, in Glasgow City Council. And when I was first elected in 2007, it was very male, pale and stale. And there was very inappropriate behaviour by some of the older male councillors in that council. I'd only been in there, I think, a matter of weeks before one of the, the male councillors thought it was appropriate to come up to my colleague and pat her on the stomach because he thought she was pregnant. She wasn't, but he shouldn't have been doing that anyway. Um, there's, there's no need for that kind of behaviour. And some years later, when I was pregnant, and more recently, a Labour councillor thought it would be appropriate in meetings with other people to offer to deliver my baby. I made him perfectly clear how I felt about those kinds of comments, and he persisted in making them because he knew I didn't like it. Now, there needs to be more challenging of those types of behaviours because they're not funny and it's not a joke and it does make women feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to see that there has been progress in women's representation in this place. And from looking at my own seat of Glasgow Central, in 2010, zero of the nine candidates were women. In 2015, three out of the nine candidates were women. And in 2017, we were the only all-female candidate seat in the country. So you know, progress has been made. Um, but it's not enough progress. And we need to think about how we support women when they get to this place as well. We need to look at maternity leave. We need to look at pregnancy. We need to look at family-friendly hours. And we need to look at even more radical things. And I've suggested in here before a kind of um, a version of the French um, system of a suppliant where you have somebody to job share or fill in for you when you're, when you're not here. And we need to look at the impact of, of the boundary review as well and about safe seats and incumbency. And can we do more about that as well? And in the SNP, we have taken the, the approach that if a male MSP is standing down, there will be a, a sort of all-women shortlist in that seat to, um, to fill that gap and help to address that. And my the former Honourable Member for Oakle and South Perthshire, Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh, is our National Women and Equalities Officer, has done a huge amount of work in encouraging women to stand and running a women's academy and getting women's confidence up, because that confidence is so important. And yeah, men yeah. often will put themselves forward for things and look at the job description and say, of course I can do that, and they could only do half the things on the, the description. Women will look at it and go, oh, I couldn't possibly. 
I couldn't possibly. So we need to encourage women to stand. We need to identify good women, women who have potential, women who have ideas and things that they want to do and to change in the world and get them to stand up and to get them to participate. Um, and we've seen a lot more female candidates yeah, yeah. coming forward in the SNP for Council, which I think is a very important starting ground for, for people who want to get into politics and a very important part of politics as well. Um, but we need to support them in that. We can't just encourage them and then take away any, any sense of structures. We need to keep that um, going over time and make sure that they continue to be supported. And we do have some exceptional uh, women in the SNP who I'm very proud of. The Honourable Member for Livingston mentioned her mum, Liz Bardell, who is one of the most you know, wonderful and exceptional encouragers in the party here, here. And, and fearsome with it as well. But we have a responsibility and a duty to make sure that we can make change, to make sure that, as the Honourable Member for Hampstead and Kilburn said, that women get here and then they get into positions of power where they can actually help to make change. Because select committee chairs have huge power to influence and to change and to set the agenda. And without people in that position, um, nothing will change in so many different areas, particularly in areas where women's policy is um, hugely affected. So I want to, to thank the Honourable Members for this debate, and I will leave my comments at that. Thank you very much, Mr Sharma. Here, here.